Yeah, well, that was yeah. okay. Let's start again. I'll announce the class. Um, this is Movies <laughs> Yoga with Via, and today is November 1st, 2022. We're back on, on track now, back on schedule. I'm home from my big trip, and um, thank you, Kathy, for subbing for me on some of those Tuesdays when I was on the road. Let's start with seven minutes. with your legs up. All right, this is called uh, static rest. Uh, there are other names for it, but that's what this, what I'm gonna call it. And I'm gonna go up there too. So Kath Kathleen is here. Welcome, Kathleen. We're uh, in static rest, legs up on a chair, watching your breath, allowing your body, spirit, and mind to enter the room, enter the yoga practice.
Stay where you are. And turn your head from side to side slowly. And if you'd want to, want to you can add the tongue, uh, placing the tongue uh, either on the roof of the mouth, curled, or in the front uh, of the roof of the mouth at the teeth, tooth line. And whenever that, um, you can add that and then take it away as you move. In a random pattern. And then come back to center. And get ready for a vagus nerve reset. There's nothing to getting ready for this. Just stay where you are and only move your eyeballs. Uh, and you're going to first, you're going to move your eyeballs to the right. And wait for a sigh, swallow, yawn, or gulp. Come back to center and move your eyeballs, shift your eyeballs to the left and wait for another sigh, swallow, yawn, or gulp. And come back to center, eyeballs back to center. Do this two more times, two more sets, right, left, right, left, without my cueing. Do it at your own pace. Uh, Kathy, let me know when you're done with your set, your last set. Use that as a guide for others. I'm going to give you a little longer, even though Kathy's finished, because I'm not finished. <laughs> Sometimes it's nice to just do a whole big old yawn. I wonder if a bigger yawn means you have been holding bigger stress. I do not know the answer to that. Let's move to um, vagus nerve reset. So the next thing you're going to do, you can, you can change what's under your head, under the occipital ridge, the back. You can put a sponge ball, a big set of a therapy balls. You can put more pillows. Whatever you want, but the idea here is to press the occipital ridge back into whatever is under your head, under your head, under your neck. Press back towards the floor and then hold and then release. And that's a set and do five more of those. The chin tucks a little bit, but it, this is, I don't want you to start with your chin. Start with the head ramping into the floor.
finish up. Breath work today, extended exhale breath. So you can put whatever you want under your head. And then this is just a very simple, you're going to inhale and maybe and count the count the inhale one two three four maybe and then on your exhale make your exhale longer than your inhale and just do five of these inhale and then exhale ex longer Last one. And now we're going to do hypopressives. And we're going to do the classic version of hypopressives. Um, so you're going to start on your back with your knees bent. And your hand and uh, your heels on the floor and your toes up bring your arms overhead like you're hugging a tree flip your hands so they're pressing away from you and then do some add some shoulder work here by pressing up with your hand your hands and pressing your scapula down into the floor and you're gonna take three regular breaths and then inhale and hold your breath. And I wanna add one other thing that sometimes I mention and I'd like to mention more because after at the top of the inhale, you've inhaled and you're holding, I want you to think of spreading your rib cage while, while I count. Spreading the rib cage, holding the breath in. No, holding the breath out, the breath. <laughs> Okay, inhale, and exhale, inhale, exhale, last one, inhale, exhale all the way out, hold the breath out, no breath, Spread the rib cage one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Inhale, drop your arms and exhale, drop your toes. Extend your legs. Extend your legs, cross your right ankle over your left, bring your arms up overhead, over your chest again, and stack them, left hand on top of right hand, and bring it over them overhead. And here we're going to take three breaths from this position, straighten your arms if you can, as much as you can. Inhale, exhale, inhale. Exhale, last one, inhale, exhale all the way out, hold your breath out, no breath, expand your, broaden your rib cage, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Inhale, the arms come down and exhale and cross your legs and recross them. Okay, now bring your arms up overhead and 
Stack your hands, left hand on top, no, right hand on top, sorry, <laughs> and bring your arms overhead. Straighten them if you can. Three breaths, three re regular breaths. Inhale and exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale, last time. Exhale, last one. Hold your breath out, no breath. Spread your rib cage. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Inhale, the arms come down and the legs uncross. And now we're going to come up to a floor seated position. So this is a shoulder arm and arms practice mainly. Uh, so we're going to start with a cervical side bend and add resistance here. So cross your legs or you can kneel or you can have stacked knees. Mm -hmm. Whatever you like. I think I'll stack my knees which, because I, I know all the benefits of stacking your knees. So, sitting tall, just drop your right ear to your, this is a cervical side bend, drop your right ear to your right shoulder, and let me time this. Okay, a little over 40 seconds. <laughs> You're going to stay here. And halfway through, you're going to drop your chin, but I'll tell you when that is. It's coming up. Drop your chin towards your armpit for the rest of the uh, time, rest of the 40 seconds. Chin up, Ch uh, uh, neck up. Let me take the ringer down a bit. Go to the other side, left, drop your left ear to your left shoulder. Breathe and think of where your movement is and go ahead and drop your chin. Chin up. And head up. Now switch the cross of your legs if that's appropriate. If you're kneeling, you don't need to switch anything. And we're going to add resistance. So this is a totally different stretch because of the resistance. You'll see. Drop your right ear to your right shoulder. Put your right hand on your left ear and press up. So this is the resistance. You're going to press up into the, the hand and I'm going to time. We're going to drop the chin halfway through just like we did before but we're going to lift the hand before we do that because you don't want to have, have a loaded <laughs> twist. Lift your hand, drop your chin, put your hand back, keep going pressing up into the ear. And lift your hand 
lift your chin, and then lift your head. And we'll do the other side. Left ear to left shoulder. Put your left hand on your right ear. Press up into the, the, hand, the, in the, hand, into the hand. It's a totally different stretch for the neck and shoulders. Breathe, sit tall. Cervical stretch with resistance. Lift your hand, drop your chin, put your hand back, keep going. And lift your hand, lift your chin, now lift your head. Good. Let me see what's next. Okay, thoracic side bend. Remember, now you're going to change uh, the cross of your legs again. Take your right hand and move it along the floor. Oh, man. Okay. Thoracic side bend. And then take your top arm your other arm up and over. And halfway through, we're going to uh, move the uh, top arm forward, but that, that's not yet. It'll, it's in a minute or two, in a second or two. Now, go ahead and move your elbow forward. So you'll feel both the side bend, the cervical side bend, not cervical, thoracic side bend, and this stretch under the armpit. Come on back, elbow comes up first, and then the, the thoracic spine comes up. Other side, left arm, along the mat, right arm, up and over. It's like a C. Make sure your hips are on the stay on the floor. Drop your elbow forward, top elbow forward. Feel an, an, an additional stretch in the armpit. You can move your head back and forth if you want. Any time that your head is available to move back and forth, you can add that. Elbow up and then to uh, torso up. You're going to switch your legs again. And this time, spine twist, spinal rotation. Take your Let's see here, we're going to go to the right. So cross your right hand, left hand on your knee. Bring your right hand behind you in a spider with spider fingers and, and twist, rotate to the right. And I'll start the timer. And remember that you can add on here, if you like, it's optional, but you could add on either turning your head from side to side or sliding your rib cage from side to side. Sit tall. Maintain your rotation, your spinal twist. Slowly unravel, come to the other side, put your right hand on your knee, and put your left hand behind your spider fingers. Sit tall, and remember you have the two options of additional movement.
Okay, come slowly out of that. And we're going to start a side lying practice for shoulders only. So this, you're going to put your head on a thick block, yoga block, and stack your shoulders, hips, and knees, and bend your knees slightly. I'm going to try to do this with you on the floor. Oops, we lost someone. Okay, so bring your, let's see, bring your arms. Scapula, protraction, retraction. Bring your top arm out in front of you, and then retraction. So pulling the arm back, and then moving forward, the scapula. This is all a scapula movement. Your arm follows. And just do this, scapula, protraction, retraction, uh, six times, five more times. Slowly with your breath, awareness of breath, awareness of movement. Where is this movement coming from? The scapula. I think that's six. Go ahead and rest your hand on your hip when you're done. Lateral arm abduction and adduction. So this one, you're gonna start in the same position and just raise your arm up to the ceiling and then bring it back down. So you can inhale and would lift your arm and exhale and bring it down to a parallel to the floor. And do it again with awareness of breath and awareness of movement. Where is the movement? It is at the, it is the head of the arm bone at the glenohumeral joint. Is this the last one, Kathy? Yeah, this one. Okay. And go ahead and rest your hand on your hip in between uh, the movements here. The next one we're going to do is starting the same way, uh, lifting your arm up toward the ceiling. I like to put my bottom hand, my finger, in front of the arm bone just to see what, notice what's happening. I want you to, you can make a, a soft fist and then move your arm forward your arm bone, the head of the arm bone, forward and then back. Uh, internal and external rotation of the arm. Internal and external. Go as far forward as you can go and as far backwards and do three more. And think about what's happening. And last one, or maybe that's an extra one, not sure. Go ahead and <laughs> put your hand down on your hip. Um, the next thing is technical snow angel. Well, it's half a snow angel. And you're starting with your arm at your hip and then ro externally rotate as far as you can. Palm faces the ceiling. Bring your arm up slowly towards your ear. And when you, when you arrive there, go ahead and face forward with your palm and bring your arm down. So it's a slightly different location of the arm bone on the way down. Start with a big external rotation. This is number two. Bring your arm up by the ear, near the ear, and then face, forward, face the hand forward and then bring it back. Let's do four more of those. And why I say technical is because I'm asking you, you know, to be very careful about where you're placing your hand and your arm.
And then go ahead and uh, two more of these. And then bring your arm back down and rest. We're going to do shoulder circles next. Let's start backwards. So uh, your arm is straight and then it just comes back and then up and then forward and then keep going. That was number one. Do five more of these. Try to keep your shoulders stacked so you're not moving your shoulders, just the arm. How many more do we have, Kathy? Two? One. This is the last one. Okie dokie. And then forward, move, do it in the opposite direction, six of these. This is one of my favorite and also should be your favorites, one of your favorites, um, just because of all the benefits. I'm letting Kathy call this one. <laughs> there. Now we're going to do flying pizza. So you're going to bend your elbow. It's parallel to the floor. And then you're going to flip it. And as you flip your arm up toward the ceiling, you also turn your wrist. And then come back down. And up. Turn the wrist. You should feel this in the scapula in the uh, rotator cuff, actually, the muscles around the scapula. And I think this is four. And five. And six. And stop. Let's switch to the other side of your mat and the other side of this series, shoulder series, side line. Starting with scapula protraction and retraction. How's your back, Kathy? Uh, it's a little tight, but it's fine. Okay. Just so you guys know, go ahead and start doing this protraction and retraction. Kathy, tell me when it's up, because I want to talk and I'll lose track of time. I just want to say that working on your upper back actually it helps your lower back, because sometimes the lower back is taking on too much, the, the lumbar spine. It wants to do all the work, and, um, and it will do all the work if the thoracic spine is tight. So... This may be helping Kathy's lower back. Yeah, I did something to my lower back, so. <laughs> right. Who knows okay. what? Okay, lateral abduction, adduction. Go ahead and start again. Same, same position, parallel, bring your arm up. This is a simple one, but try not to move anything but the arm. So the show, you know, the thoracic, the, the rib cage does not move. Always aware of your breath and your movement. Where is the movement coming from? Well, the glenohumeral joint, the arm bone in the glenohumeral joint. Now, the next one is uh, internal and external rotation. So make a soft fist, and then so to be help help 
the movement be at the base of the arm and the vinyl humeral joint, and you're going to internally rotate and externally rotate. Internally as much as you can, and externally as much as you can. And then stop that, rest a bit, and the next thing we're going to do is technical snow angels, half a snow angel. So externally rotate as far as you can, and then bring your arm up by your ear, and then face your palm forward and bring your arm down by your hip. And repeat. And four. Keep everything stacked. Knees, ankles, hips, uh, shoulders. And now, after you finish this, we'll start with, we'll rest a minute. And then we'll start with shoulder circles, starting with the arm going backwards. Okay, six times. The last one in this direction. And then immediately start forward the other direction. Last one, and rest. And then start, get ready for flying pizza, bent elbow, palm facing the floor. But now you're gonna move your arm up, your, the forearm up towards the ceiling and rotate the wrist so that the palm is facing the ear. Come back down, repeat five times. Feel the work in the rotator cuff, in the scapula. If you don't, you're not going far enough on your rotation. Okay, let's see, we've finished the, oh, okay, we've finished that, and now we're going to come up to a floor seated, to a floor seated position, and take your favorite floor seated position, or one your less, less favorite, but more, more flexibility. Shoulder shrugs. So, 
Shoulder shrugs are easy. You just take your shoulders and take them as high up as you can and then let them drop suddenly. And just do that six times. And now, let's do shoulder sh one shoulder shrug at a time, and then when you drop your head, you're going to drop your head. So shoulder shrug on the right, drop your ear to, to the shrugged shoulder, and then roll forward and backward, um, oh, about six times, forward and backward, um, maintaining the shoulder shrug, please. So you're really rolling over the shoulder. Whenever you're ready, drop that shoulder, lift the other shoulder, shrug it, keep it shrugged, drop your left ear to your left shoulder, and roll back and forth. So if your neck and shoulders are really tight, there, you may feel limited in this movement. <laughs> but do it anyway, and it'll get better. And then whenever you're ready, drop your shoulder and stop. Um, what are we going to do next? Let's do... Let's do, um, let's go to standing. Let's go up to standing. Against the wall or? Against the wall. We're going to do a back bend at the wall. Okay. So, Kathy needs to change the viewing perspective. <laughs> But everybody else can get up there and get started because maybe you'll get two of these in instead of one. What you're going to do is to put your back to the wall, a little away from the wall, bring your arms overhead, and try to put your hands on the wall. You may or may not be able to get there, but this is, and keep your hips directly over your knees and your ankles. So this is all about opening the chest and extending the, the upper spine, back extension. Oops, and I forgot to, oops, I forgot to um, time it. So let's start now. Breathing, seeing if you can open your chest just a little more. Extend your back just a little more. Four more seconds. Okay, and let's go ahead and do the um, side bend. The spine twist at the wall. So now with your right body, right side body at the wall, step forward with your right foot and bring your arms up, back with your left foot, bring your arms up, bend your elbows, and then rotate. And I'll do the timer. And stay here and breathe. Sit, stand tall. And as you breathe, see if you can make your rotate rotation or your twist just a little bigger. And stand just a little taller. Our bodies love spine twists. 
Hopefully, hopefully you'll find other places to do them besides your yoga class. Slowly unwind and go to the other side. Left foot forward, right foot back, left body, side body at the wall. Bend your elbows and rotate your thoracic spine. Stand tall. Maybe you can rotate just a little more. We're holding for 40 seconds. Okay, um, slowly come out of that. Um, um, face, the, uh, face away from the wall. Again, you can even step away from the wall because we're going to do short foot. Oh, you might, yeah. So short foot is a very important exercise for the feet. They're very simple, but often overlooked. It, it really, it creates a little, it shortens your foot for the exercise by, by bringing, pressing the toes into the floor. So we're going to do it by one, one foot at a time, taking the right foot forward first, and then lifting your toes and lowering your toes slowly. Don't bend them, keep them straight, and then just press them into the floor and see if you can find... You're going to hold there, see if you can find the arch, the shortening of the foot and the arch, plantar arch. And breathe. You can do these by yourself. You can do both feet at the same time while you're standing. You can do one foot at a time. Go ahead and switch sides. Left foot forward. Lift your toes. Lower your toes slowly and gently onto the floor. Keep them straight. Press, them, press the toe pads down. And see if you can find that arch, that shortening. of the plantar arch back to front. You can do these while, while your feet are inside shoes. It's not quite as good, but it's better than nothing. I would do it. I do this at the grocery store for sure. And go ahead and come out of that and come down onto your hands and knees. For a bird dog, maybe this might be the last one we can do actually. Um, bird dog, the first thing you're going to do is extend your right leg, keep your foot on the floor and extend it there and lift it. Now, that's one, one position. Bring it down and bring it all the way down. And now the other, you're going you're gonna to do that again. You, know, you can do it again on the other side just to get the idea and then bring it down. Now, take your, from this position, right, right foot, extend it and lift it and then lift your right, left arm. And stay here as long as you can. This is a balancing. Try to keep your back straight and still. And we're going to be here for 20 seconds. I don't think 40 is too long. <laughs> Three more seconds. 
and then go ahead and bring your leg down and bring your arm down and switch to the other side. Extend your leg, lift your leg, bring your right arm up and so opposites and stay here. And we're going to stay here for 20 seconds. If you can, if you can't, you can come on down. This is great for balance. This is great for core. You should feel your core uh, contributing to this, this position, this movement, this static movement. And come on down. And find your way onto your back for Yoga Nidra. I'm going to have to go get my Yoga Nidra script. But while all I am, you can organize yourself on the floor, comfort something under your head, maybe a washcloth on your uh, eyes, and maybe a blanket. Go ahead and start to notice your breath and notice the abdomen as it rises and falls with your inhale and your exhale. Go ahead and you can either extend your legs or you can leave them bent like Kathy, whatever is comfortable. You could even put your legs up back up on a chair. Now, bring your awareness and your attention to the center of your eyebrows center of your throat, right shoulder, elbow, wrist, right thumb, second finger, third finger, fourth finger, fifth finger, right wrist, elbow, shoulder, center of your throat, left shoulder, elbow, wrist, left thumb, second finger, third finger, fourth finger, fifth finger, left wrist, elbow, shoulder, center of your throat, spiritual heart center, right side of your chest, heart center, left side of your chest, heart center, navel center, center of your pelvis, right hip, knee, ankle, Right big toe, second toe, third toe, fourth toe, fifth toe, right ankle, knee, hip, center of your pelvis, left hip, knee, ankle, left big toe, second toe, third toe, fourth toe, fifth toe, left ankle, knee, hip, center of your pelvis, navel center, heart center, center of your throat, center of your eyebrows. This completes our Yoga Nidra 61 point guided meditation. Go ahead and extend your legs and bring your arms overhead. And then start to stretch in both directions. See if you can find a little bit more space with this yeah. movement, a little bit more space between your rib cage and your pelvis. And start to wiggle your fingers and your toes. And then circle your wrists and your ankles in one direction and then the other. Hug your right knee to your chest and squeeze. And then extend that leg and hug your left knee to your chest and squeeze. Extend that leg along the floor. Hug both knees to your chest and rock from side to side. And rock from side to side.
And then whenever you're ready, roll over to one side. And stay here. We're going to stay here for a minute. And take some time, some of your own space and time, to thank yourself for coming to your practice today. Thank your body for come, joining you. Thank your cells. They're thanking you. You could listen to your cells thanking you. They get satisfaction from a practice like this, just like they get satisfaction from eating food or drinking water. You have nourished yourself for the last hour, and your body thanks you. Probably your family thanks you, actually. Whenever you're ready, go ahead and put your top hand on the floor and bring yourself up to a seated position. I'm going to remove the spotlight and take a view, a gallery view, and you can make a gallery view on yours as well. Good. And I'm going to, oh, let's go ahead and come into a prayer pose. And press your hands together and see if you can find some of the work we did in the upper back. And now soften your prayer pose. Lift your um, head away from your shoulders, the occipital ridge, so that you can Fold forward over the cervical spine, the top of the cervical spine, C1. Rounding, folding, nodding. Noticing that each of us is a brilliant light. And then knowing that we're all one light, all part of the one. And we'll close the class by saying to each other, Namaste. Nice. Thank, Thank you, you, everybody. Thank you, Via. Nice to see you, Kathleen. Nice to see you.